Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and today we are going to be taking a walk through the garden and checking out all the beautiful late summer bloomers here in the garden. It is the end of August right now and I think it's important to showcase what's blooming at the different times of the year and right now check out this gorgeous tall phlox. Let's take a closer look. The first plant we're featuring is the Cover Girl Phlox. This is a tall phlox part of the Garden Girl series. This phlox is about three and a half foot tall, and this is a grouping here of about three plants. So the massive color you're seeing is not only one plant, but there is a grouping here of approximately three plants. Beautiful purple, but with a lot of pink tones in it. This is a great plant for pollinators, the butterflies, hummingbirds, the bees. It likes to be planted in a full sun location. And Garden Girl series of phlox has been bred to have an increased disease resistance. So powdery mildew won't be near as prevalent in these newer varieties of phlox as which maybe some of the older varieties um, tend to have. So really a gorgeous big, black, big splash of color here in the garden. These summerific hibiscus have been blooming now for, this is probably going on their fourth week of color and they are just doing absolutely fabulous. The one here in front of us is Holy Grail, beautiful dark near black foliage with extra large crimson dinner plate blooms. And that is definitely something that is signature of these hardy hibiscus. The Summerific series, they are indeterminate. So they bloom from what I like to call tip to toe, meaning that the flowers don't just land at the top of the plant. The flowers go up and down the stem, which that means you're gonna get more flowers throughout your growing season. Here's a drought tolerant plant that's great for late summer color. This is the Sedum tiramisu, and it is just starting to change into its fall coloration. It's got nice dark foliage, and the flower buds, we'll go in for a closer look, they're kind of a orangey-ish color before they open to that nice bright yellow. Really kind of a unique look, I think, for sedum. A lot of times when we're thinking of sedum, we're thinking of a nice bright pink flower, but this is adding a really unique and different twist to the sedum family. So these are about 20 inches tall or so and about 20 to 24 inches wide. You can see they kind of did a nice little sweep planting here, kind of mass, but definitely space far enough apart that they are each their own individual plant. And it's looking really nice here mixed in with a lot of the different fall grasses and such. So if you're looking for a drought tolerant perennial, this one attracts the pollinators. The, there's a lot of bees and such on these plants, um, but also just really brings and showcases, I think, a neat look to the fall gardens. It's always important to add motion into the garden, and that can totally be done by planting ornamental grasses. Here we have the desert plains grass, and you can just see how it's gently blowing here in the breeze. This grass is around four foot tall or so. It's got the really nice fuzzy plumes on it. The plumes have a little bit of a burgundy hue. Nice green foliage as well. This likes to be planted in a full sun location. And like I said, it's about four foot tall or so by about four foot wide and just loving to dance in the breeze. Cherry Chocolate Hibiscus is looking really nice as well. Uh, this particular one has, again, the olivey foliage, a little bit of burgundy hues going on. Um, certainly not near as deep a purple as some of the other varieties we'll come across today. Uh, but you can see there's a little hue of burgundy going on with the nice olive color leaves. Cherry Chocolate also features nice overlap of the petals. You can see there's a pink and white going on, kind of a swirly, twirly, twisty kind of pattern. Um, I think it's really pretty how that deep, dark magenta eye is kind of bleeding out into the veins of each of the petals and creating a really stunning effect to this particular summerific hibiscus. As noted, grass is a great complementary plant in a garden. Here we have the Panicum totem pole. These totem pole are about five and a half to six foot tall. It's a nice narrow columnar plant, uh, grass. So if you're looking to add a grass that's more tall and upright than what it might be big and round, totem pole has great structure. Uh, the flower or the little tuft here is a little bit different than we saw on the desert plains, just a little bit more airy and dainty feeling. 
um, but really a great plant that adds a lot of nice structure into the garden and a lot of motion. Here's another great specimen from the Garden Girl series. Here we have Phlox Fancy Girl, a little bit lighter flower color, kind of a soft pink with a deep dark magenta eye. These are about three foot tall by three foot wide and just look at that beautiful mass of color. The nice thing with the Garden Girl series is, is when they're done flowering, they bury their dead and they send up more flowers. So they do kind of a repeat bloom. Really a beautiful color. And look at it planted next to that butterfly bush and that black smoke bush. What a beautiful, beautiful plant. The edge of night hibiscus is such a beautiful hibiscus with its deep dark black foliage with these bright pink flowers. Nice thing with edge of night is it is a little bit shorter than a lot of the other hibiscus, only getting about 36 to maybe 42 inches tall uh, and just a little bit wider than that. I think it's really important that you add in foliage color to the garden because obviously your flowers are only blooming for a certain point in time, but the foliage is always just shining and giving just a vibrant addition to the garden. You can see it here, it's paired with garden flocks, tall garden flocks. This is opalescent and then a beautiful butterfly bush in the background. So if you're looking for a great trio for your end of summer color um, and a summer interest, here you have it. If you have any questions or comments on any of these great late summer bloomers, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.